Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to share with you the combo that I really actually super love. It's called, it's, it's, I don't know what the hell it's called. It's a run cam micro combo is what I call it. It's basically a run cam micro swift or swift two with the, uh, run cam TX 200 transmitter. So this is pretty cool. And let me show you this. Maybe most of you have seen this. Maybe some of you actually have never seen this. So what's so cool about this? that is just you know not really found anywhere else and let me show you what i mean so obviously you get your little run cam micro here i really like this camera it's very nice 20 bucks or a little bit more expensive i think now i don't really remember but i think it's around 20 bucks ish and the what really sets it apart is this thing here now this is a transmitter it's a 25 to and a 200 milliwatt transmitter from run cam and they provide you with the adapters inside to plug this right behind it. So you get one of those like super crazy tiny all-in-one cams, but you get like a proper um, setup here, like a super proper setup. And I really do love this. And I have this on my, uh, what is it? My drone mesh split scene and some other things as well. So if we take a look at this right here, this is from the transmitter. It comes with these little screws and stuff. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at them. So let's go ahead and set this up. So what you do is you get these little spacers here they're really tiny let me actually zoom in here so you guys can see it all right so what we have to do first is remove these screws right there and uh let's just go ahead and do that together okay so these are the ones that come with the camera and um when i figured when i first figured this out i was just in awe and then i just remembered them again so you got to be careful because that's actually you're actually removing the front cover from the sensor here. So if you take a look here, you see that? You don't wanna just keep pressure on it. You don't want that to open. It's not a big problem if it opened, but you really don't wanna get dust or something on the sensor over there. So they give you these little spacers and what you do is you're gonna plug in these spacers. So there we go. We, ins we were just basically replaced the screw with these little spacers here. And um, let's do the same thing to the corner there. It's just two screws basically, which is really cool. All right, so we have both spacers installed now. What we need to do is we need to grab this guy here. All right, so what you wanna do is, what next you'd have to do is basically just install the screws that it came with here, and then just install them like so, and you should be good to go, which is really nice. But like this, you will not have the OSD. The OSD you would have to hack, basically cut the yellow wire from uh, the camera, and then just uh, go ahead and stick that on your flight control, and I'll show you that right now. Let's just go ahead and put these screws in real quick. All right, so everything is set up now. So let's just unplug this guy here, okay? So everything is pretty much set up here. And uh, let's take a look at this and let's understand this thing here. So this two wires, the black and the positive, uh, you would give the input and this will provide also power for your camera. So you'd have to give this from the five volt regulator uh, to provide power for this whole setup here. So this is from the VTX. So we give it a five volt and a ground. Now you have this green wire coming out of the VTX. Where would this go? This would go on the output, on the output of uh, the flight controller if it had an OSD, the, the VTX output. So let's just take a look. This is the SpeedyB flight controller. It would go on V out. So this w would go on V out. Some other flight controllers would say VTX or VO, which is video out also. So that's where this would go. And uh, if you had OSD, and what you'd also have to do is you would have to cut this yellow wire here and uh, go ahead and connect it to your camera input on your flight controller. Now, if you didn't have OSD and you didn't want OSD, what you do is you forget that there and all you gotta do is you plug this guy in and that's it. It's already out, out broadcasting directly from the camera to the VTX, but no OSD and this is what the OSD is for. Now, I don't know if they have it where you can just connect this to the video out of the uh, flight control and it'll take the OSD overlay as well as the camera and figure out a way to actually set that up. I don't know if it really does that, but that would be super cool if it does. But if you could try that first because it's the easier method. So just put this on the V out after you connected everything, see if the OSD will overlay or not, or it will probably be, end up being possibly a black screen or something. So it really depends on that. And um, yeah, that's something that's uh, very important to take note of. But overall, this is a really nice package. I mean, let's get its uh, dimensions here. So we're going to take uh, from the point of the screw here, or just a little bit above, or you know, from the screw right there to the back here. So it's around 13.03 millimeters. Okay, so and its height is the maximum height from the back part here is around 19 millimeters, we could say. So it's around 19 millimeters of height.
and 13 millimeters from here to here. Now, what's really important is actually diagonally, because when you put in a quad and you push it like this, it takes a bit more space than it really, sometimes than you'd really want it to. So it's around 21.5 millimeters diagonally, 25.1 millimeters, 25.1 millimeters. Because sometimes when you bend this over, this will hit some kind of a top of frame because that really happened to me before. And when you try to bend this down or something, that, I mean, when you're bending it up, that would hit the back of the frame like this, the bottom of the frame. So it won't give you the full angle that you want. But overall, this is a really nice combo. I think it goes for like 35 bucks if I remember correctly. And I could be totally wrong. I'll leave a link down below. But um, this is the second one I've gotten, and uh, I, I really, I really do love it. But some things you need to take note about micro cameras, because I've broken one before, is the little. If you wanted to refocus this, be very careful uh, with this little spacer ring here, which is kind of what keeps it steady. That little one right there. Uh, what I, what happened was, is I tightened it down, and I still needed just a little bit more from the from the lens. So I said, you know, what? I'll just push the lens just that little bit more while this was super tightened down, and then boom, I stripped something, and it just I had to super glue it, and it looks like absolute like crap. So yeah, take that into consideration. These are very fragile. These these little parts right here very fragile but i really also love how the can the lens is so far recessed in this it gives you a little bit more protection depending on the frame but it's really it's it's better than to have it all the way out here that's 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 for sure and um overall it's a really nice setup i do recommend it i have used it it has pretty good decent range and you could also always uh switch out the antenna here if you wanted to uh, it's not using mmcx port it's using the little ipex port and um, it's over time, it'll kind of wear out a little bit. But overall, I mean, you could just put super glue, not super. You could use super glue or epoxy or some kind of um, what is it? Hot glue. And you'll be totally fine. Actually, no, I wouldn't recommend hot glue because these tend to get kind of warm and they can melt the hot glue and it'll just be nasty overall. So overall, I do highly recommend this camera. I've used it. I love it. Um, it has its, you know, specific places, especially if you're using a a really like small lightweight feather light frame other than a micro and uh this will that's it you know you have your camera and your vtx all in one spot and um it'll be taken off the five volt regulator so you'll probably even get clean video feed depending on how noisy your quad is and depending how good your five volt regulator is so it can be a nice little hit with the overall build or it could be a total miss sometimes if the 5 volt regulator is not clean. But if it's not clean, also the VBAT wouldn't be clean either. You would probably need to add some capacitors. But overall, it's a nice little camera. And I do recommend it. And I do love it. And I've used it before. And, well, that's it, guys. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. I'll leave a link to everything down below. And uh, if you could use those, that would be super awesome. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.